Well, good afternoon. This is Jay Waters. I'm with the Americans in Wartime Museum in Virginia. This is the Voices of Freedom Project. This afternoon, it's my pleasure to interview Mr. Walter Fratton. Today is 16 November 2019, and we're in Oceanport, New Jersey. Sir, if you would, could you just tell us your full name and when you were born? My full name, Walter Fratton, and I was born in 1924. And, and where were you born? West Hoboken, New Jersey, okay. which is no longer there. It was absorbed by Jersey City. Okay. And what, what war did you participate in? What war did you participate in? World War II. Okay. And what branch of service were you in? I uh, finally got promoted to Radio Man Second Class. With, with, the, with the Navy, the U.S. Navy? With the U.S. Navy. Okay. So, did you have any other family members that had served in the military? Parents or brothers, uncles, had, pre had served in the military before you? No, no, no. So you were the, you were the first one in, the, in your yes. family? Okay, okay. Well, well, thinking back to December 7th, 1941, when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, where were you that day? What do you remember? What, what can you tell us about it that? It was a school day. November 7th. Okay. And uh, we were all shocked in school, and of course all boys. I went to join the Navy two month, a few months later, but uh, what happened, we were lined up in a New York City uh, training station. There must have been about 300 men. We were all lined up, and you know how the sergeants do, you guys go here, you guys go there, shut up, and so forth. And when he finished, there were 60 of us left, and we said, now what about us? He said, the, um, the training stations are all full, so you're going to have to wait. We're going to send you home and we'll call you and you better come because you're sworn in. And I could have been dead because you never know where you're going. And that was uh, uh, from June 15th to my entry into the service was November 11th. Right, 1942, well, Veterans Day, November. That's in that something? Yeah. yeah. But so, well, well, why did you join? Why did you join the Navy? Oh, because we didn't like what the Japanese and the uh, Germans were doing. Okay, so you, so you enlisted? You, you enlisted, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, where did you go for your initial, initial training? Newport, Rhode Island. Okay, and, and tell us about what you did in Newport, Rhode Island. Oh, every day you learn to march. Okay. Good exercises. They taught us many things that would happen to us in the in the water, but that was no problem because uh, <laughs> I was a lifeguard before I went in the navy. Okay, so you could swim. That summer I got a job, twenty dollars a week for okay. seven days, and I had to clean the beach to boot. Yeah. And I had to bring my own boat, George Gaskin didn't have a boat and the state mandated a boat or they can't have the beach. Yeah. Well, so when you were at your initial training up in Rhode Island, were there other sailors that had been drafted or was it all just folks who had volunteered? No, they, got, they came in from different uh, methods. Well, so was there, did you notice any difference between the, the folks that had enlisted voluntarily and the folks who no, had been drafted? No, not really. No. And it's funny because I was in a group from Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Staten Island. And they were, they, oh, we were sleeping in hammocks about four feet above the floor. Floor was cement. And during the night you'd hear kaplunk, <coughs> blankety blank. 
It hurts to fall that far. Oh yeah, yeah. They couldn't make it, but they finally did. Well, and so how did you get your your specialty as a radio man? I went to school. Okay. Well, when we finished boot camp, I had put on a, because a friend of mine entered be, way be six months before me. He quit school and went in the navy. And he said he liked radio man, so I took that choice too. Okay, so where did you go for the where did you go for the radio man training? Boston. Okay. What was that like? Oh, we attended school every day. There weren't any exercise. You had to learn the code or you got you get kicked out. And that and we lived in in a old, beautiful hotel. Only the rooms had about six or eight guys. Okay. Yeah. And were you learning like Morse code and other other? Yes. Okay. Everything was code, and and the code came. The messages came in five letter groups, and you had to pass that to the code room. Okay. The officers, you couldn't figure it out, and it was just different letters. Okay. Uh, any any other training after Boston? Yeah, Navy radio, uh, Navy uh, destroyer school in Virginia. Okay, where, where in Virginia? Do you remember? Where where in Virginia? At the naval base. Oh, um, uh, down in like Norfolk area. Okay. And what was that training like? Again, that was steady work. We we practiced jumping off of high. Uh, Barracks uh, high, and we jump in the water. A lot of guys didn't. They didn't want to do it. Look, right. I think it was 20 feet or something, and that, they they just didn't want to do it. So I'm thinking this is probably now 1943. You're still doing the training at, in Virginia. No, uh, I turned uh, I turned 22 in April. Right. No, but the the year was 19, I'm thinking it's 1943. Um, not, you were in Virginia in 1943. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So do you remember anything of any incidences when you were in Virginia of German submarines off the coast? No, we didn't hear. Well, they, well, they didn't tell us anything. Didn't tell you. Okay. Okay. Well, then where did you go after your training in Virginia? When I finished, uh, I got on a... A destroyer escort. Oh, and we did a um, shakedown in uh, Caribbean. Okay. Which was a, about three weeks, and uh, we came back to the United States, and they sent us on a convoy right away. We went takes th took thirty days. We we went to Casablanca. Okay, uh, so you were in Casablanca, so this is now probably after North Africa has been invaded, liberated, right? This liberated, right. yeah, it was clean. Okay. And then we uh, turned around and took a convoy back. Anything unusual, though, on that initial convoy? Uh, any German submarines or Italian? We never saw one, but we... Uh, we um, uh, we attacked one, but we don't know if we ever got any results. Okay. And when you went to Casablanca, did you get to um, go into port? Were you, uh, did you ever get off the ship? Or yes. What? So what was that like being in, uh, in Morocco? It's, uh, you could, the city had off limits. Okay. We had to stay in a certain uh, part. Okay. They had they had they enforced it. They had shore patrol. They had military police, because if you get you get mixed up with the natives, you start a fight. Right, right. Okay. Well, so then after the initial convoy into the, the Mediterranean, did you go back? Where where did you go next? Back to Norfolk. Back to Norfolk. Okay. And and at that point in time, 
In fact, I was in my bunk, I was asleep, and a chief petty officer was coming to the Otterstetter, and he was going to be in charge of the radio room, and so I was a burden, and I got transferred at midnight to the cruiser USS Philadelphia, and we tracked across the ocean and joined the, uh, they were invading Anzio at the time. Okay. And we were the main support. We had uh, five, six inch guns, and the Germans had a railroad gun. They shot 25 miles. We shot 15 miles. So we had three destroyers smoking, and we were smoking. And uh, every day we take co coordinates from whoever was in a scene of uh, activity. Uh, could be an airplane, could be a foot soldier, could be anything given us. An, and if they gave us coordinates, that was gone. Right. And. Once in a while, the Germans would see our mast, and they'd just give us a, and you could hear it. It was like a flying garbage can it was big, and it either fell short or went over us. If they got two glimpses, they could well connect it to us. Right. Uh, Oh, and the, uh, if the Germans wanted to shoot a certain way, they had a round table, and they'd take back up or go ahead and get on the table and turn a little. They were pretty slick. Yeah. They held up that invasion for about 30 days, if I recall, and we got sent out because we used to make fun of the boys up in the con tower on a ship and I say I wonder how they know you can't see eh, we're going this way that way three of them and they had to stay close because we had to be invisible we crashed wow the destroyers like this the fantail we went right across a hundred feet in and we were glued together. What, 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 did, what had you hit? What, what did you hit? One of the smoking what? destroyers. Okay, and you hit another ship. We, we hit just in front of the smoke equipment. It was a good thing, because you can use all the smoke you can get. Yeah, was this at night or in the day? Was this at night or the daytime? Daytime. Daytime, well, wow. Well, at night, this was like going to work. At night, we'd go up the coast to Naples and anchor and go sleep. And then we got up extra early, about 4.30, and we motored down to uh, Anzio and waited to get uh, some coordinates. Right. While we were in, in uh, Naples, Vesuvius erupted. Okay. That's the last time and the first time. It hadn't erupted for quite a few years. It erupted, and that's it. I don't think it's ever erupted again. And the ash and everything was going thousands of feet in the air. The wind was spreading it, and we, it was coming towards us. This is the service. Our captain asked the uh, master of the harbor to can we move? Maintain your present position hmm. was the answer to that. And for about three days, we didn't have a gun that was would shoot. That was all. Everything was plus the ash worked its way six or seven lifts down to the keel of the. Uh, cruiser 
and we washed, we cleaned, we washed, and he could still grit your teeth. Right. Huh. Well, so back to um, when your destroyer collided with the other destroyer. How, how when, they, when the two destroyers collided near Anzio. No, no, two destroyers, us and a destroyer. And a, and a smoke, yeah. Well, you're, you're, you were on a destroyer, and it, you hit another, when the two ships collided, so what, what happened from that event? No, fortunately nobody was in the end of the okay. in that zone and no one got no one not a scratch. And uh, they they had a tow they sent two two navy tugs from Naples and uh, we were pushing but we were doing about a half a knot. Okay. And when the two tugs came they could because we had to get out of range for that from that gun. Yeah, it was like pushing a T. Because the, sh the ships were kind of entangled. Oh, they were yeah. stuck. Stuck. Okay. And then, then when we got out of the gun range, the they tugs pulled and pushed and pulled, got us apart. Right. Okay. Well, when you were off the coast of when you were off the coast of Anzio, you said your guns had about a 15 mile range, and the Germans had 25 mile. So how close into shore did you come? How close to the? Oh, quite. You, well, you couldn't see it. You couldn't. You still couldn't see it. You couldn't see the Italian. You couldn't they see Anzio. They didn't take us near the beach. So I you weren't think. that close, but you were within the German <coughs> range, obviously. By a lot. Yeah. Okay. And did you ever get harassed or attacked by German? I didn't hear. Ger you. Did you ever get attacked or harassed no. by German fighters? No, uh, the Okay, well, 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 just tell us about a German, uh, the one German at, air attack. At night, at night, when we were anchored, and I think it's silly for us to be anchored, because the bombers came, and we're stuck on the end of a chain. And it could go this way, it could go that way. And the Germans at the time, the USS Brooklyn was in the... Uh, with us, and it, it got hit with a guided bomb. The Germans came up with that, and they could change its course. I don't know how, but they did it, and they went right down the funnel of the Brooklyn. Okay. That's straight hit. Well, so we were, we were talking about the distances from the, the shore to you guys, and the, the German fire, the, sh the airplanes, and you were talking about the USS Brooklyn being hit by a German bomber. So what happened after it was hit by the bomber? It went down so the bow was only about a foot out of water. And they, I don't know, they, they, could, they could use their own power and they just <laughs> sailed to safety and they, I don't know where they, I, they might have gone all the way back to the States. Okay. They could stop in, uh, there was a dry dock someplace, can't think of it, Malta, I don't know. Okay. And uh, for minor repairs, they would stay in the uh, Mediterranean, but if it was bad, they'd have to take them home. Okay. Well, and so, while you were on the ship off of Anzio as a radio man, what were your actual duties, day-to-day -day duties on the ship? Well, we were constantly, we never got off. When it was our watch, we did code. Okay. So you were below below deck in yeah. a compartment or just kind of describe what Couldn't the, see anything. Couldn't see anything. Once in a while we used to get a break. Okay. Because well, so they smoked then. Okay. I never smoked. Oh, cig smoked cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Cigarettes. Okay. But so, what was the the working condition? Was it? I'm trying to imagine what life was like on the ship. Um, it kind of was always the same thing. You didn't know anything, and you just did your duty. But very tight quarters, I would imagine. Very oh. tight. A lot of guys around. This much between the beds and. And if this guy was in his bunk, I couldn't turn sideways. You have to stay flat on. <laughs> yeah. 
it probably uh, didn't smell too good either, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and not in Italy, but in, in later on, I uh, went out to the Pacific. You could never dry yourself. Yeah. You took a shower, and you wrapped a towel around you and go back to your bunk, but it's, you could keep drying forever. You never get dry. Well, you the, were saying that the when mattress you were... was wet. Yeah. Well, and we'll get to the Pacific. We'll get to the Pacific Theater in a minute. But so, when you were still doing the Anzio operation, you'd go back up to Naples with your ship. And from what I've read, the, the port of Naples had been heavily destroyed by the Germans. So, can you did you get to see that? Oh yeah. What was town, that? Yeah. What was that the like? Town. Everything was bombed. Bombed, and, and the oh, Germans yeah. destroyed the the piers and the ships, right? Yeah. What did that look like? When the when the ship when we finally got back to Naples and they they anchored and they're trying to arrange uh, repairs and they let us out on the town. Oh, they picked ninety guys to go get a new uh, new cruiser back in the states, different rates and ranks. And we were, and it was a delayed order, uh, thirty days. So if we could get home, you had thirty days leave. Wow! So we were running around like a bunch of crazies, the airports, other ships. Uh, uh, we want to go home. So they locked us up back in the hotel because everybody said we were pests. This was the hotel in Naples. This is in Naples. What did you get to interact with the local, any of the local Italians? The, the not Napoli really. Family? No, not really. Okay. They they always kept us apart from everything. Okay. Okay. Well, then, did you get picked for this duty to go back to the states? About the eighty of us. And and you were in that. We went group. to Boston. And we had the uh, celebration. I was a plank owner when you're the first one on the ship. I was a plank owner for the destroyer escort. What was the name? What was the name of this new ship? Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh. So you went from the USS Pittsburgh. Well, you went from the USS Philadelphia to the USS Pittsburgh. So there's a Pennsylvania connection. And there. we we went down to the Caribbean for a very short spell and tried everything out. And I had been on two ships before, the Otterstetter and the Philadelphia. And, and when the waves got a little big, the Pittsburgh used to make funny noises. Hmm. And I'll tell you about that when we get out in the Pacific. Okay. Well, have you been promoted now too? What's your What's your rank now that you're on the? Uh, oh, I Pittsburgh? was elected a petty officer, third class, right away. As soon as I finished radio okay. school. Okay. Okay. So I was advantageous as far as uh, work. The apprentices did all the work. Yeah. So you're you're a supervisor. Yeah, we're you, a big you, deal. And you you can you've got sailors, junior sailors working for you, as a as a petty officer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, so you picked up the USS Pittsburgh, you did your Caribbean tour. Where did you guys go next with your ship? Out, we mm -hmm. cranked up and we went out into the Pacific. And we were in time by about two weeks. And we, we uh, went to Iwo Jima. Okay. And uh, those battles are battles of insanity. The whole sky is always all black with AA, anti-aircraft right. fire. And you wonder how our planes can fit through it because they're chasing the Japs and they're flying wild. And uh, we're shooting never stop and all that. I don't know where the ammunition all comes from. Yeah. The whole boat has to be ammo stacked in different places. Mm. And then they're shooting 
Oh, here's one from the shore. A friend of mine was a Marine, and he, he and about six others were stuck halfway up Suribachi. Mm -hmm. And they were getting hammered by two different guns. And I, uh, they're getting smeared. They can't move. They're right. pinned down. And the guy cranked up his phone, and he wants somebody to give him some fire. An answer came on, and he says, I have, a, I have some Japs on the hill. I want you to take them out. The guy says, you're on an unauthorized channel. Now, could you hear, could you hear this? Oh, no, they told me. They told, that. Okay. Okay. Well, so then what happened? They kept fighting the best they could. Yeah. They got out of it. Okay. Well, were you close enough with your ship to Iwo Jima? Could you see the island itself? Oh, sure. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure, because they didn't have stuff to reach us. Yeah. Okay. Because the Pittsburgh was... It's a heavy cruiser now, and the guns are eight inches instead of six. I can't remember what the distance was. We, the Pittsburgh could carry much better with the eight inch shells. Was there still a threat of Japanese air attack? Oh, steady. Did, did you see any Japanese airplanes? Constant. Okay. Oh, oh, when you were there, they're trying to get you. Yeah. And that's when they first came, no. They first came out with Kamikaze in, yeah. in the Philippines, I think. Okay. About six or eight months before this. Well, did you see any, did you personally see any Japanese airplanes or were you always below deck most of the time? In Pittsburgh, I think I was two decks underwater. Yeah, okay, okay. I'll tell you the typhoon story now. Well, let me ask you one more question about the, the Iwo Jima. So when, you're, when, you're, when your ship is firing, onto the island. What was that like on the ship? I mean, could you could you hear it and feel it? What was what was that like to be in that ship oh, as you're firing? The ship's like a, uh, a tin can. It, you got all the different, you got 20 millimeter, that sings one song. A 40, boom, 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 right. it's a little slow. A five inch interval, boom, boom. And if the main battery shoots, the whole ship's nothing but a shaking uh, okay. noisemaker. Yeah. Really bad. And this was going on hour after hour. As all day long. All day long as you're firing all on All day that. long. Okay. Never quit. Well, and then, so then the uh, battle at Iwo Jima lasted weeks and weeks, as I recall. Um, so were you on, were you there the whole time? The ship was there and... Well, I don't remember the time. Yeah. It's funny. But it, go, it goes so different, you know. Well, and probably being below decks, yeah. just day after day, you'd lose track of. Yeah, well, we, we used to sneak breaks. You're not allowed to spit the small hatch cover. You're not allowed to open any hatch. And, and, why, and why was that? If I'm not mistaken, there's always somebody watching the hatches. Because okay. if they need the watertight integrity, okay. somebody's got to now. Right. Well, yeah. you said the guys that smoke cigarettes got more breaks. Yeah, they go up and smoke cigarettes. Did you Did you start smoking? No. No. So, they're, okay. You would have gotten more breaks, though, had you been a smoker, I guess. Did they give cigarettes to fr for free in, in the rations? No. A buck for a carton. Oh, you had to buy them? Oh, I used to buy the cartons in Italy. Okay. And huh. 10 and 12 year old kids in Italy, you buy a Beretta automatic, and we bring them back to the ship and hide them. Yeah. And then when you get transferred, all your stuff spread out on the deck. And the guy says, What's that doing? You're not allowed to have that. Yeah. And he takes it for himself. Wow. Yeah, there you go. The petty officers and the ensigns and um, well, so then you started to tell us about the typhoon that hit your ship off of Okinawa. What what happened up there? Um, we were awakened 
because we got up before 5, 5, 5.30 was our regular get up time. But at Okinawa, we got up at 4.30. And when you're trying to see things, and it's half dark and mostly dark, and you, you, the, the cruiser Franklin was about 200 yards, 300 yards off our stern. And all of a sudden, this friend of mine was captain of a five-inch uh, mount, five-inch gun, and he says, look, it's a Jap. And he called in to uh, receive permission to fire from the, from the uh, gunnery officer. And how long can you argue? when the plane's doing about 125 or 130. He's there, he went up in the air before he got to the Franklin, and he went above it, let a bomb go. There were all the planes for that day strike on the flight deck. They're being pushed with aviation fuel in a four inch lines because they wanted to fill them up quick. Those, those things caught fire. Mm. The armament on the planes, the bombs, the torpedo, they caught the stuff was like you never saw. Yeah. You never want to see. Right. And just everything's blowing up. The the Franklin went into a list, probably about, not 45, a little less. And the guys were sliding off. The deck on a carrier is 90 feet out of the water. The guys were jumping. And if you don't, if you're not solid when you hit the water, it's like concrete. Right. Right. And you better not be diving, you better go straight down. Uh, it's amazing the things that went through. We picked up about 18 guys. Okay. They were black. A very courageous captain. We were just coming in. And this other cruiser got there before we did. And the Franklin's down here like that. And he came right amidships and he ordered his guys to bind his cruiser to the carrier. Now if that carrier goes, it's going to take the cruiser with it. Yeah. The Admiral ordered him off, cut the lines and leave. You can't be there. But they were bringing the wounded direct without all the lines and everything sure. and time and you drop one and uh, okay, it's, this is by hand. He disobeyed the order. He was a real hero. Yeah. And he stayed there till he got as many as he could and the ship was secure and then he cut the lines. Okay. Uh, the about nine, the complement on a carrier was probably, oh, uh, I'd say about six or seven hundred men. I'm not sure. Yeah. And when, when the, everything was finished, guys, got the fire under control. This took a long time. Sure. Oh, and we had to put the tow line on. We, we fired a tow line okay. and we started pulling away. How to get this thing away from the air. And the airplanes are going nuts. The kamikazes. Yeah, there's, so there's Japanese yeah, airplanes still coming. We're, we're about 40 miles from land. From from Okinawa. At this yeah. Point. yeah. Yep. So they could keep flying as long as they had planes. Uh, where was I now? 
Well, you got the tow line attached. We got the tow line. About 90 men were left aboard the uh, Franklin. I can't believe it. They pumped water out, pumped water in, okay. and they went back on even keel. And after we told them about a day or a day and a half, they got their own engine performed. They could make two knots, which was we were making towing uh, Franklin. And uh, I knew one uh, one young fella got killed on the Franklin that was from Jenny's hometown in Hillside. I played softball with him in Hillside when I went to see her, and he died. Mm -hmm. And uh, many, many, the many died. Well, it sounds like, I mean, as, as horrible as it was that many died, it also sounds like between your ship and the other ship, many men were saved by rescue and, and, and oh, pulling yeah, them over. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But yeah. the fire, one fire, a four-inch hole got the nozzle, a four-inch line got the nozzle destroyed, cut the hose in half, and it's going like this. And it's flame. So it's it shooting fuel the, the, on the, the deck. The, okay. On the and and it's it's coming towards these guys, and they're near the stern. They had it. They're jumping off. Yeah. The captain wanted to put the guys that jumped off to Franklin on report, and he got talked out of it. Okay. A lot of times they they get cuckoo. I think you also put on your note here that when you were up by Okinawa, there was a, a, a typhoon, a, a, a tropical cyclone or whatever they call it, right? It hit your ship? Yeah. What was that like? Hell. <laughs> what it was like was we're, sa we're sailing, our captain said we're sailing into a typhoon. We're going to send a message to my friend Halsey. And by this time, the war was near over. And we didn't use code anymore for short messages, plain language, and, and vocal, not radio. And little by little, the biggest ships in the convoy, in the task force, may we change course blah, 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 this is Captain Jones, clunk, another guy comes up, can we change course? In other words, it would mean like instead of going to Long Island, you go to Virginia. After many, many messages, there finally came a click. This is Admiral Halsey. Germany surrender, Japan is on its knees, I have amassed the largest armada in history, I can take my ships, they're his ships, hmm. anywhere in the world, maintain your present course and speed. And if this doesn't sound like a jackass, I don't know what it sounds like. That typhoon, we lost 110 feet at the bow of the Pittsburgh. It just dropped off. Wow. And if the captain wasn't heroic and backed up, and you can't do that in a storm, because the inside partitions are only eighth inch steel. They can, can maintain water, but they can't take pounding. It'll yeah, break the pressure, wells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the waves were nice. They were 100 feet high. The uh, air was nice. It was blowing 130 miles an hour. And the seas were... It was unbelievable. You know, if you went 
out of cover outdoors the wind and the rain put all blood specks mm. on your face you couldn't stand anything and the bow the bow he, he also had to back away from the bow because if that hit us that's another accident right. so the captain asked the guys down below to the cap, uh, officer, officer so and so, how are we doing with the shoring on the bow? The an officer answered him. He said, "The men refuse to go down." The captain says, "You you lead them down." Down like lower into the ship. Yeah. Oh. No. Below water. Okay. Yeah, this has got to be scarier than hell. Yeah. So we saved the uh, if if the if the any of the shoring broke, the next thing was the uh, first eight inch gun, and then it was all clear. It would have been water in the engine room. That would have been bad. And where were you at the time? During Sometimes the underwater. But in in the. Radio room in your in your station. Down, it was a couple of decks below water. Yeah. <laughs> but you were you were probably busy with all the other message traffic. Yeah. Okay. Well, then how how long did the typhoon last? Probably five or six hours. It ruined more ships. It caused more damage to ships. The Seventeen ships got damaged. And uh, we were the worst. The Hornet, the carrier, the like I say, the decks are 90 feet up. The front deck of the Hornet was like that. The mm -hmm. flight deck mm -hmm. was turned completely back on us. And the others, are, and one destroyer, that's another story. One destroyer rolled over and they saved they saved a small amount of men because if a guy gets clean from the ship and he's got his life jacket on and you want to rescue him how do you rescue him yeah. put the bow on top of his head and bang it down but they did men would go down the rope ladder and grab a guy in the water and help him up the ladder. That's heroic. Yeah. Well, so when the when the typhoon finally stopped, your ship was was heavily damaged. But um, we're going to Guam. Okay, you went to Guam. They had a repair station that lifted up the front of the ship, but they they put a dummy bow on and sailed on to the United States. You know. And I'm picking on Halsey again, because probably in January, this is in the summertime, I think, the typhoon, I'm not sure, June or July, and in the uh, Philippines, that was in uh, December or January, and they got a typhoon there, and Halsey lost three destroyers yeah and they asked for freedom to go away he was uh, I don't know what he stood three trials I don't know if you knew that well so did you did you go with the ship to Guam yes and then from Guam to the US no I we we stopped in Pearl Harbor and a crew another cruiser was stopped in there and the, they needed a radio man bed because somebody died. A radio man on the ship had died from what I don't know. And I got sent on to Louisville. Okay. And, and we went to China. Okay. Korea, China, we just, the war was over. Yeah. We we're on a cruise. Well, let's go back to that. So when it's now August of 1945, 
and the, the, the U.S. drops the atomic bombs on uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. H how did you hear about that, and, and oh, what, yeah. was your, what was your reaction when you heard about that? Hooray! Okay. Hooray! Did you, did you have any idea, though, what an atomic bomb was, or what, what it... No. Yeah, just... What, 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 what did you hear? What was your understanding of what had happened at that point? I, you know what? I can't remember. Okay. But just that we were glad the war was going to be over. Yeah. Okay. And then so now you're on the USS Louisville back in the Pacific area. The war is over. So how much longer were you were you over there? That was uh, that was probably around June, and I got discharged uh, January. So it was probably six months. Okay. Well, and, and we'll come back to your... And it was much different because it wasn't a war anymore. Yeah, yeah. The hatches were all open. You could go wherever you want. Yeah. We were, we were regulated where we could go, you know. You just couldn't wander around. Well, did you get any interesting port calls that you got to get off the ship? Did you get off the ship in China or Korea or any of these places? Never let us off. They didn't let you off. Okay, a bunch of sailors on liberty would be... Uh, They'd go crazy. Trouble, could be trouble. Um, well, let's just go back to whether it was Anzio or the Mediterranean or in the Pacific. When you were on the ship, how were you able to keep in contact with family or friends back in the United States? Well, you wrote letters. Wrote letters, okay. Yeah, and yeah. you couldn't... They were all... Um, they went through them before they yeah. would get mailed. Okay. And I then had an officer standing there reading yeah, everybody's yeah. mail. Yeah. And did you use um, did you use V mail? Were you using the V mail system? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Lightweight. Yeah. Okay. What was V mail? Yeah. Can you tell tell for the group or for the for the recording what was V mail and how did that work? I didn't hear you. How did how did V mail? What was V mail and how did that work? Uh, I don't remember. It was a little card. Uh, they had their own little uh, mailing stamp on it, and and you just fold it in half, and it had an adhesive, I guess, the whole, I can't remember, really. And were you able to, did you get mail from the, on the ship? Or, Every or? once in a while. Yeah, okay. Packages or just letters, or what was that like? Packages came in like garbage. <laughs> okay. And then, it uh, sounds like you were really busy, but did you ever have any free time? And if so, what did you do for recreation or for fun? After the war? No, du during the war, when you were on the ship or in port, did you get well, any? Well, there was no fun, no, no recreation. No uh, no card games no. down there in no, the... In no, no. If we went in the port, yes. Like, I boxed. Okay. Tell us about your boxing career. That's in the it. Navy. I had about four or five bouts okay. whenever we stopped someplace. Okay. And that um, was good because they gave us steak and different things that the other guys. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Well, that's good, that's good. Who, who would you box against, other sailors or was it like the Navy against the Army? Or no, the, no, other sailors. Other sailors, okay. Yeah, okay. they tied up. And they had a movie before the movie. I had boxing. Okay. Did they give you a beer or any any? Could you get a Could you get a beer or anything like that? A glass of wine or a beer? No. No. Nothing. Okay. Any USO shows? Did you ever? One. One. Uh, when the uh, Pittsburgh stopped in Pearl Harbor, there was a island, and they called it Beer Island. Okay. Okay. And, but the beer was still lightweight beer. And whoever raided Liberty could go to the island. And it was a big, long line of quarter mile long. <laughs> and the guys, had, you could get two beers. Yeah. And the guys would go get two beers and drink it and get in line <laughs> and drink. <laughs> then we had to go carry them in. Oh, and, they had too much. A lot of them would pass out. And so we'd carry them, drop them. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever have any any USO shows or entertainment shows come to your area? Actually, 
the greatest, Bob Hope. Okay, you tell us and, about that. And uh, uh, Algiers. Al in Algiers, he came aboard the uh, Philadelphia. Okay. I forget who the girls were. Everybody went nuts. And he put a, he was an amazing yeah. character. Wow. He put on some show. And he had the golf club. Oh yeah? What was he doing with the golf Bob club? Bob Hope. Was he hitting golf balls off the ship or what was he doing with the golf club? With the golf stick he always uh, used it for yeah. walking yeah. and he'd swing and he'd tell a golf story. He was funny. That's good. Bob okay. Hope. Okay. Well, so then, let's go back to the, the end of the war. You're on the USS Louisville. Eventually, you got, you got back home. So describe your homecoming. We came into Huntington Beach, I think, or Huntington. And, that, and then they sent us ashore. That in, in California? We got leave. The, the the transportation wasn't ready to ship us to our dismissal pl place. So anyhow, uh, one, one guy, and I had been with him since he was in uh, boot camp. He came right along with me every time we got transferred. Ruddy. And he liked to drink. Oh. He bundled up all his Navy clothes and we were tied up to a dock and there's like the space between the dock and he threw them in there. He got rid of them. And he went and bought civvy clothes. And you can arrest him, even if the war's over. He came back and he brought a suitcase on the ship. The suitcase was full of booze. <laughs> How'd that work out? One compartment got all bombed up. Wow. And it doesn't work. Yeah. You can't do it. With all the men, you can't do that. Well, did you, did you eventually get back to New Jersey? Uh, we, we were delayed in uh, Huntington for about six, eight days, and then they had a train arranged for us to go right through, which we did. Lido Beach, Long Island, that's where I got discharged. Okay. And then what did you do after discharge? Did you come back to New Jersey or you... What? No, I came home. Came home. So what was oh, it like sure. coming back to... Sure. To this area. Sure. Any anything stand out about your? your I called up Jenny. Okay. His wife. His wife. <laughs> okay. You know, we actually knew each other from when we were seventeen years old, and we got married at the end of the war. Did you, where'd you go? Did you have a honeymoon and where did you go? Honeymoon and, and where'd you go? We went up to around Boston and New Hampshire. Okay. We stayed in the forest up there. And it was a forest then. There yeah. was not much. Yeah. Did you receive any, any awards or decorations during your wartime service? Not really. It was just our uh, buttons that we put on. Yeah, for, or for the ship, yeah, the yeah, campaign yeah, got, medals. For, for each uh, encounter, you got a pin. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, and what did you do after the war? What was your, your civilian career? Construction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, how do you think your, your wartime service affected you the rest of your life and, and what you did after the war? How do you think that affected you? Uh, not in any way, really. Uh, there wasn't, what I was doing didn't have anything to do with I did in the Navy, so it wasn't something I learned. So, all right, well, so we're getting down to the, 
last couple questions here and we'll open it up like we did for the last interview to the floor if they have questions but as you look back now on your uh, your wartime World War II service in particular but but is uh, how, how would you want uh, future generations you know your children and grandchildren what would you want them to know about you and your and specifically your wartime service for future generations well that's kind of a hard question uh, the, the kids have asked me and they're impressed and uh, you won't want to you know now the new ships are all air conditioned we died with that sweat and steady, never stopped. I was in the Pacific near a year, and you just don't get dry. Yeah. And that was the worst thing that, that I didn't care for. The food, we were fair with food on the, on the cruisers. The Otterstetter, food was bad. It depends on the person in charge of the mess. If you got a good mess cook to take care of it, you got good food. They know what to order, and they know how to cook for masses of people. Okay. Well, the proverbial last question is, is the last question, and it's, is there anything else you'd like to add or discuss that I haven't asked about or any more detail on something? I forgot one thing. Please. Admiral Halsey was on trial three times for his boob. I can't, I can't even, he killed so many guys it's not even funny because they lost three destroyers in, in the Philippines and one destroyer at Okinawa, and there's no excuse for that. And all the guy had, a, and you think he did one? When he went to the second one, why didn't he change? And in the Philippines, he ran. He was supposed to guard one, one the north section of the Syriano Strait, and he went chasing a jap. And when the guy's inside had the Japs pounce on them, a little fleet. They didn't get any help from Halsey. He, he I don't know what was wrong with him. Mm. Mm. I thought it was probably drinking, because he was only 40, no, he was only about 63 or 64, and he, he didn't look like a well person I don't think. For that age, he should have still been good looking. Well, why don't you tell us, you got some photos here to your right. Why don't you hold those up and just tell us uh, what you got there. This one was when I finished, see the radio? Yeah. Thing? When I finished yeah, just hold, uh, hold it up a little bit. radio school. Okay. And uh, I was 19 by th about three months when I finished radio school. Okay, and you're, and you're smiling there. Yeah. That's a good photo. And this one is 19, probably 1945, taking a walk in Pearl Harbor. I came off the Louisville and I'm out in the street, and one of those street guys, Okay. Yeah, you give him two bucks and he gives you a picture. And the war and the war is over at that point, right? Oh, the war is over. So, are you smiling just as much in that photo or not? You should be, no. right? He can't see good. No, uh, no smile. All right, no, that's good. That's a good photo. No, that's not smiley. I didn't know he was taking it. Oh, okay, okay. He he tricked you. Well, we've got the. Uh, you're surrounded by family and friends here, or friends. So I'll open it to the crowd here if there's any other questions that... Uh... I guess I have something to Please. ask you. I should have asked my dad also. Oh, that's well, the beginning of the airport. Can you... Am I still being recorded? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. No, we wanted to see if anyone else had questions yeah, for you. you You've got to come close because I can't yep. 
Can't like hear it. Be in an Air Force. Would you want you to be in the like Air Force? Be. Did you want to be in the Air Force? What? He asked if you wanted to be in the Air Force. Yeah, I would have liked that. The wild blue yonder. <laughs> Well, good. Well, we got the Air Force and the and the Navy. I I did when I, as soon as I got my uh, degree from radio school, I wanted I signed a, a, a paper that I wanted to beat a gunner on a on a plane. Mm -hmm. uh, what plane is that? B twenty From the carrier. B twenty nine. Not a bomber, a fighter 17? plane. Fighter plane. Navy fighter plane. I don't know. I'm out. The the radio man had to put the hook on to pick the plane up out of the water, and he had some some other duties too besides radio man and shooting a machine gun. But I didn't get called. Okay. What and Carolyn? You I was had just thinking when this thing you all returned home all the lost boys for all those years, right? You all came home back to Long Branch because you're all gone for so long. The girls attacked us. <laughs> well, that's, well, all right. I, that's, well, okay, that's great. Um, I bet that was so nice. What you doing when you got attacked? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> the girls attacked you when you got home. Ah. Charlie's, Charlie's just asking about the girls Charlie's again. The girls attacked you when you got home. What oh, happened? yeah. Sometimes in bunches. <laughs> you, went to, you went to general quarters and battle That's right, general quarters. Well, Walter, on behalf of the... First, I'd like to shake your hand and thank you for giving me your time this afternoon. And on behalf of the Americans in Wartime Museum and the Voices of Freedom Project, we'd like to present oh, you that how about point. This? Yeah, that's the military challenge coin. Maybe hold it's that up. It's not a pin, though. No, it's a coin. Hold it up for the camera real quick. Walter, show it just, to the just, camera. Just show it to the camera. It. Yep, so that's our, uh, that's our coin, and that's our small way of thanking you for this interview, but more importantly, thanking you for your World War II service and your service to our great country.